Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this week we're going to be going over some new modifications for the Game Boy Pocket. And, you know, to me it's amazing just how many new screen mods are available nowadays. I mean, it was only about a year or two ago when all you could really do was modify the original screen. And now there's some really impressive options that are available for all of the Game Boy series of, of consoles. So today what we're going to be doing is installing the Super OSD uh, IPS uh, screen from console 5 and other places of course sell this as well and so what this does is it takes the original screen out and it replaces it with a, a much larger screen and it has an on-screen display that's what the OSD stands for and you can use that to change things like color palettes and um, the positioning of where the image is and a whole bunch of other cool features so yeah let's go ahead and get started okay so here is a just stock baseline comparison of what a normal Game Boy Pocket looks like. So you can see that, you know, the screen is not easy to look at. You need the right kind of lighting, and I've taken my my studio lighting and just rigged it in such a way that it makes it manageable here. And, you know, there's also a decent amount of motion artifacts, so you'll see that here while Marin is walking towards Link. Uh, it's pretty clear. So, you know, this is nice, and it's I, I actually do keep a stock pocket just so I can have that original look when I want to. But for, you know, everyday usage, this is definitely not fun. Um, not when you can do much better. So, so yeah, I went ahead and just put this stock screen in here just for the sake of comparison. So now let's go ahead and take this thing apart and get started with the modification. All right, so taking these apart is actually really simple. All that you need is a tri-wing screwdriver and a standard Phillips screwdriver. These are the ones that I use. You can get them in lots of different kinds of kits that make stuff for modifying Game Boys. Um, so there's six of those tri-wing screws right here and then the back plate comes completely off. And then there's three Phillips, and they're indicated by these green circles, so you can't miss them. So you take those off, and then I'm gonna just go ahead and lift these bales right here. And before I go too much further, you'll notice I did do a little bit of repair work on this console. It had an older type of screen mod on it, so I wanted to just bring it back to stock, and we needed to do that for what we're doing today. So you can just kind of ignore this, but I just wanted to call it to your attention because you'll see it and you'll be like, hey, what's this? <laughs> All right. So once you've removed the bales, you can then take the screen out, and this just comes right out. And now at this point, we're going to get all of the contents out of here including the screen. So we're gonna get the buttons out and power switch. And then this is usually attached with an adhesive. So you just have to carefully kind of lift it up. There we go. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and keep this screen because it's a perfectly working screen and I do run into pockets all the time that have broken screens. So I will use this to fix another Game Boy Pocket in the future. All right, now last thing I'm gonna do is just get rid of the original screen bezel because we're gonna replace it with a completely new one. There we go. All right, so everything's taken apart. So now let's move on to the next step. All right, so first order of business here is going to be to trim the screen. And this is pretty similar to what you do with some of the older IPS mods. Uh, so what we're gonna do specifically is we're gonna remove this portion and then this whole wall here going all the way up to the corner over here. We also have to trim a little bit of the shield for the LED. Um, it depends on your version of the pocket though. There are some versions that don't have an LED at all, so those don't require any trimming, but <clears throat> most of them do, and so this one is going to require a little bit of a trim. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the trimming is all taken care of, and so the next step now is to go ahead <clears throat> and install the screen. 
So you'll notice I have gloves on and that's because this step is tricky and you just don't wanna get your fingerprints on anything on the inside once you've started this. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and peel this off. This is just a protective cover for the front. There we go, that looks really nice. <clears throat> we'll start by just installing the screen here on the pocket. So now that that's on, we want to act quickly so that dust doesn't get in there. And we're going to go ahead and put this IPS screen in its place. <clears throat> and then to get it in place, we have this nice little 3D printed bracket from console five that should get it centered exactly where it needs to. The nice thing about the OSD <clears throat> is that even if you don't center it correctly, you can actually move the positioning of the image so that it will be centered right. But this just helps, and it's also reversible, which is really nice. Instead of using like a tape or a glue, which is going to attach the screen permanently to the shell. All right, so we're basically all set with that. And so from here, we're gonna go on and connect the screen up and wire a few things to the main board. Okay, so now that the screen is in place, we're gonna go ahead and do some work on the main board right here. So we've got four wires to connect to four pads over here on the main board. It's bat, A, B, and select. So let's go ahead and solder in those wires. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and done this, we're gonna take the other ends of these wires and we're gonna solder them to various places on the PCB. So the bat wire is going to go right over here and it's gonna to connect to this leg over here on the power switch. So this is what gives power to this whole board over here. Um, these three wires over here, these are gonna to go to pads right over here that are uh, corresponding to the select button and then the A and B buttons. And so I'll, I'll be going through that in detail once I finish uh, wiring it up. All right, so now let's go ahead and combine these two things together. So first we're gonna just apply this insulating film. This just protects the metal from the back of this IPS screen so it doesn't come into contact with anything. We're also gonna do the same thing to the back of the PCB over here. And so from here, we're gonna go ahead and combine the IPS screen with the motherboard. Okay, and you can see these two flex cables go into these parts of the board as well. And now we're gonna go ahead and install this little flex cable, and then you just lift up the bales right here. Just slide this guy into place. And 
and then lock it down. And then finally, I'm gonna go ahead and get some Kapton tape and just attach these two to each other because this just seems to move a little bit too much for my liking. Okay, so now that everything's finished, I just wanted to show it to you guys one final time before I go ahead and close it up for good. So you can see here that there are two sensors that are placed here and here. I believe these are for brightness and for changing the color palette. So they're just there. And if you touch in those regions, you'll, you'll change those things. Um, I've just used a little bit of Kapton tape here, and this is just to hold it down because by itself, it was just flopping around in, in the shell a bit. And I just don't like the, the fact that it could bump into stuff. So this keeps it in place. Um, the flex cable goes in with the stripe facing up towards you. And then here's our four wires. I shortened them a little bit off camera just because I wanted them to be nice and tight, basically. And so we've got um, this pad right here going to the A button, this guy right here going to the B button, and this one here going to select. And then finally, there's this pad called BAT, B-A-T, and that connects up to the power switch. Oops. <laughs> that connects up to the power switch and that helps to power the motherboard. So now that everything is all put together, we're gonna go ahead and assemble this thing and give it a quick test. Okay, so we're back with the fully assembled case. And I mean, hopefully this image speaks for itself. I mean, this IPS screen modification looks really, really good. I mean, everything is bright and crisp and um, it's like pixel perfect. It looks unbelievably good. And also the screen is larger than the original one too by I think about like 20 or 30%, something like that. But anyhow, let me give you a tour of all the different options that this thing has. So over here, we've got a capacitive touch sensor. And if we do that, we can change the color palette of the pocket. So, I mean, personally, I really like this, this grayscale one or, or this one here because it has that original Game Boy kind of look. So, you know, you have your choices and you can mess around with that as much as you need to. Over here in the upper right, you've got a little touch sensor that changes brightness, which is hopefully showing up on camera here. So, so that's really nice. And then finally, over here, if you hit select A and B together, you'll bring up an on-screen display. And then you can use the A and B buttons to toggle between the different options. And then if you wanna mess with one, like say if I wanna change this pixel effect, all you have to do is hit select an A. Oops. No, it's hard to do this on camera. There we go. Select and A. And it lets you change this one. So now if I hit the A button, I can turn this pixel effect on and it gives you the LCD scan lines just like the original screen used to have. And I have to say, this looks really good. I mean, there are a lot of scan lines that I find look really fake and really crappy, but this looks original. This really looks like the original screen did. So overall, I think this is a really outstanding modification that gives you a lot of options and control over how your, your system looks. And it really makes the pocket look better than ever before. All right, guys, so if you like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos like this every Friday, and uh, of course, I'd love to hear your feedback, and if you guys have any consoles of your own that you need repaired or modified, you can also reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. Okay, well, thanks so much, guys, for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.